Uh, how do you feel when you are the inner circle of the host families? Uh, what are things that you feel when you share the same food with the people in the same table with you do not know? Maybe sometimes you don't speak the same language. Well, uh, the language is, yes, but we share the language of food. <laughs> And I think that is the most universal language there is, the language of sharing food. And even if we didn't speak, we could enjoy food and, uh, and maybe talk about food in a limited sense. And, and, then, um, and I think uh, that kind of enjoyment uh, transcends language in a sense. One can sense enjoyment and pleasure in, in, the, um, uh, in the nearness of, of of your host or hostess and their guests and their sharing food. Um, this trip experience uh, help you feel closer to the people on the other side of the ocean? Oh yes, very much. Mm -hmm. And think that this may help for a like, better world in the future, more peaceful world in the future, if people have this type of experience? I, I really do. I really think that um, Part of the problems that we have is that, we'll, as, uh, as my husband said, we do live in a smaller world. However, it's in spite of the smallness of the world, people don't know each other. And part of the reason is because they don't travel as much. Um, and they tend to stick to, to stay with themselves. And I think that uh, traveling is an act of faith. It's a leap of faith um, that you take. And necessarily, you have to break down barriers, and you have to know people, and you have to put your trust in other people. So you get to know them not as an other, but you get to know them as a friend, um, as an aunt, as an uncle, as a sister. However, unfortunately, recently, a, news, a French newspaper, Francois, published a uh, caricature depicting Prophet Muhammad in a peaceful and in a horrible way and uh, people think that it put a, another barrier mm -hmm. between the cultures, between the faiths, people of different faiths. Uh, even though the, the violence cannot be justified by mm -hmm. any means, mm -hmm. but the, it, the, the caricature itself put a uh, fence between these mm -hmm. two cultures. What's your reaction about this? Type of well, I think it's, um, it's very unfortunate and it's in very poor taste. But I think, I think that most reasonable people um, would see, regardless uh, of their faith, that this is a bad cartoon. I think most people realize this is an offensive cartoon. And perhaps um, they might be um, more... They, I hope, I hope they would be more um, thoughtful in their views in the future and, uh, and think about the reactions and the consequences of their actions. But I think that most people of, of intelligence would see this as something really, really distasteful and offensive. So I don't know whether I would see it as a barrier perhaps but also maybe as a way of of um, of making some people want to know the other the other culture better in spite of these unfortunate events I understand you correctly do you mean that these unfortunate events might be a new motivation for yes. getting to know each other uh -huh. yes I do believe that mm -hmm. um, I believe that you also visited a couple of schools inspired by Mr. Gilan. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are the what impressions did you get from these schools? They were they were bright, orderly places. Um, I got a feeling of a lot of joy in these schools. Um, a lot of enthusiasm on the part of the teachers and the students. Um, close relationship with the students and the teachers and um, um, I was very impressed and um, um, I think that it, it was wonderful to, to watch children grow up with so much um, 
enthusiasm for learning. Uh, enthusiasm in the students in the schools versus students in the in public schools in the U.S. in terms of enthusiasm for learning. Uh, yes. Uh huh. I think um, I think that the Gulen sm schools are usually smaller than schools here, and I think that's very important in. Um, the education of children. I think there are schools here that are small and of the same caliber and, and you can tell the difference when students receive uh, special attention from their teachers because the teachers are able to give their students what they deserve. Whereas in public schools that are large, often the attention of the administrators is not in the interest of the student but rather in, in administering and uh, um, and um, having to fulfill mandates from the state and it's often the teachers are overwhelmed and they can't offer their students what the students need. So I think the refocusing on smaller classrooms, individualized attention to students, bringing out the student's potential is, is very much in the spirit of Glenn and I think that uh, that's, um, that would do well here. Uh, do you think that the, the students that educate that get education from these schools will be uh, play, will play an important role in world peace tomorrow? In terms of given that they got this type of education and consideration, mm -hmm. uh, will they be able to the the heroes of the Interfaith dialogue. What's your idea about that? I think that uh, I think that when you raise thoughtful children, uh, when they have parents who teach them those kind of values of thoughtfulness and awareness of the world, and something that I would call mindfulness, I think that, and it's also encouraged in the schools, then I think you raise individuals who will make a difference in the world and who want to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm.